ladies and gentlemen, Pat Johnson! Hello, white people. <laughs> thank y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. I'm glad everybody could come out tonight, you know, after the pandemic. I didn't know if we were going to get, you know, stand up back. I didn't know if we were going to get a lot of shit back, you know. We lost so much. Like, public God bless you. Yeah, that shit is gone. <laughs> Just imagine if I sneeze up here right now. <laughs> yeah, everybody be like, the fuck is your sick ass doing out here? And, <laughs> yeah, please do the decent thing. Go home and die. <laughs> and I'm so glad that the pandemic's over now. Now we could like talk about the truth about COVID, because white people did a great job. They had everybody believing that Chinese people started this shit. <laughs> that shit was amazing. Like, yo, Chinese people ate a bad bat, and that's how COVID started. <laughs> that's wild. That's wild, because we all know COVID started from a white woman kissing random dogs in a park. I'm tall. People tell me this shit every day in my life as if I've never seen myself before. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking stupid. Because everybody assumes that being tall is all rainbows and white women. <laughs> and it is. It is. It is. But what they don't take into account, though, is that also every day in my life, someone reminds me how I fucked it up by not making it to the NBA. Yeah, yeah, just the other day, this lady, she saw me, she ran up on me. She was like, you play basketball. Yeah, like it was a fucking fact. <laughs> now I do, but I don't like this lady. So I was like, no, it's like, no. She was like, well, you should. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, really, bitch? What makes you think I haven't exhausted all those options? Yeah, yeah. Now, what do you want on your Subway sandwich? <laughs> That's why I like comedy, because y'all respect me when I do this shit. Because anything else, like, y'all wouldn't respect me. I could have been a heart surgeon. I could have saved your father's life. Come out there, you know, after 82 hours of surgery in the waiting room, I'm like, hey, man, you're going to be fishing with your pops in no time. You would still look at me and be like, but can you dunk? <laughs> so stupid. The dumbest thing that ever happened to me, though, was uh, I was walking down the street, and a homeless guy, he was sitting in a flower pot. He saw me. Yeah, fucking lost his mind. Yeah, yeah. He was like, hey, young brother. Hey, young brother. I can't wait till you bring some school a championship. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, mm, Nick, I'm 30. Yeah, and he was like, oh, and I was like, don't you dare be disappointed by how my life turned out. It's not all bad, though. There's some positives from being tall, uh, like top titty view. <laughs> the best thing that ever happened to me from being tall was uh, I was a victim of positive racism. 
Y'all white people should try it. I was at the basketball courts, naturally. And um, yeah, yeah. And this, I was just waiting to get on the court. And this old white guy, he ran up on me. He was like, you're on my team. Yeah, and I was like, okay, whatever. And we get out there, and he's just yelling at me, go to the hole, dunk it, yeah! <laughs> yeah, so y'all familiar how white people be. Um, and I started getting upset, and then it hit me. I was like, oh, shit, he thinks I'm LeBron James. Yeah, and it made me play harder. Yeah, because this motherfucker was really old. Like, he had a lot of loose skin. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he looked like a melted candle. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, okay, it's up to LeBron James to bring him his last championship because this would show his last game. Um, <laughs> but what had happened was on game point, I got the ball and the lane opened up, and I went and I dunked it. And just so happens that when I dunked it, uh, I dunked on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when I dunked it, I yelled out, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, he was very old, so when I dunked it, he just started crisping away like one of them niggas in Infinity War. <laughs> I'm glad y'all could come out to the comedy nook. I picked this place because I don't have security. <laughs> I really like that. Um, if you really believe somebody with the word security on the back of their shirt is gonna save your life. If anything jumps off, you are a dumbass. I know that because I used to work security. <laughs> and I wasn't gonna save nobody. I had to get out the game though. Um, Last time I worked security, I took this job in San Francisco. You know, I thought I was going to make some money, max some bitches, and I was wrong. I was, yeah, I was completely wrong. Because when I got to this party, it turns out it was a bear fest. Yeah, okay. One person knows what a bear fest is. <laughs> For y'all that don't know, uh, imagine like 400 Harry Hulk Hogan's. Yeah, dancing with each other in Leather Falls. It was, yeah, having a gay old time. It was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, I had to get this money. So about like six hours into me working the back door of this party, uh, the guy who hired me came and tapped me on the shoulder, pointed to some guy getting his dick sucked next to some porta potties. Yeah, and was like, tell them to stop. Yeah, yeah. I was like, mm, excuse me, sir, but um, when I responded to your Craigslist ad, <laughs> nowhere on it did it say dick sucker stopper. <laughs> yeah, I quit on the spot, you know? I got morals. You're not going to make me no professional cock blocker. I also, I just understood. I was like, yo, like, as a man, how much game you gotta have in order to talk somebody into sucking your dick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. At a day party? <laughs> Next to some porta potties? Like, you earned that shit. You earned that shit. Speaking of security, Joe Biden fell off a bike. <laughs> I thought it was a beautiful moment, you know? 
I thought it brought the country together because I know everybody who watched that felt the same way. We all watched that shit, him fall off that bike, and we was like, this nigga. <laughs> now Trump, he might get arrested. But I heard that's a good thing because I heard he gonna get traded for Brittany Griner. <laughs> All this shit just like really makes me miss Hillary, you know? <laughs> it makes me miss Hillary. I feel like we fucked up. We missed our chance to get Hillary in office. I thought it would have been dope, you know, to have a lady in office and you know, four years of fire ass pantsuits, that would have been. <laughs> like, could you imagine a president that dresses like Steve Harvey? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just sad because I knew like, after she was out of office, we would have got like a Netflix show. That would have been amazing. By that third or fourth episode, we would have got the scene that we've been waiting for, her and Bill Clinton having sex. That would have been amazing, you know. Just that camera just panning through the fucking, through the White House and creeping into the Oval Office. And you just see Hillary pegging the shit out of Bill Clinton. <laughs> Yeah, beating them cheeks down. <laughs> you know, long, hard strokes, you know. <laughs> yeah, to the point like he just fall to his knees. It's, it's like, oh, oh, Hillary. Yeah, she just grabs him by the head. Call me Monica. <laughs> Shoves the dick down his throat, yeah. And that's how Bill Clinton died. <laughs> While we on the topic of politics, um, I'm gonna get on my soapbox for a little bit. Um, the Me Too movement was huge, and I feel like we could really do something about that tonight if we just stop kids from tickling. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know everybody's like, oh yeah, I love tickling, but if you actually look at the act of tickling, you realize that it's one person pleading with another person <laughs> to stop. Yeah, it's the it's the gateway drug to harassment, so <laughs> next time you see a kid tickle another kid, you know you punch that motherfucker in the face <laughs> for humanity's sake. Also I hate kids, I be hating on babies. <laughs> nah, nah, I got I got beef with these motherfuckers. Um, I actually got kicked out of a, a birthday party for a child the other day. Um, my friend, he got a baby and he was like, yo, bring a gift, bring a gift. I was like, okay, well, you know, you my man, I'm gonna bring your child a gift. Um, so I brought it, uh, a baby bottle of Hennessy. <laughs> also, I was like, nigga, you my friend, like not this motherfucker, like. So it's like, yo, you let me know when your child start rolling blunts. <laughs> then we could kick it. Then we could kick it. My mom's here. <laughs> She's a lifesaver, you know, because my father was very hard on me. I wasn't the best student in school, you know. 
So every time the report cards would come home, my mom would be there and she would see it first. And like, mm. <laughs> you just wait till your father gets home. Yeah, and then she would go in the other room and she put on a mustache. I love it. My mom, so she a Muslim now, so she act like she ain't never did shit in life, but. <laughs> but we from DB Stokeland in the 80s, so I'm like, yeah, I know you sold a lot of drugs. Rock a bye, baby. <laughs> yeah, she always telling me and my my lady to have uh have kids. I'm like, nah, nah, uh 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 uh, uh uh, not trying to do that shit, not at all. I see how you treated me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see what I've been dealing with this whole time. See what I've been dealing with this whole time, yeah, so. That's why I don't be having morning sex, you know, because of her, because that's when, that's when it's fertile. What, y'all fans of morning sex in here? Y'all not, no, that shit is disgusting. Yeah, morning sex is some of the grossest shit you could do in your life, by far. <laughs> Sorry, like, I'm, ladies, just, like, imagine that I, I wake up with my dick harder than reading in front of class. <laughs> yeah, and I see you, you know, with your hair all fucked up breath killing my nostril, the eye boogers everywhere. Somehow, some way I'm still willing to fuck you, but I gotta be honest with you, it's gonna be very hard for me to maintain an erection. Yeah, once we lift all these covers and release all these farts I've been doing. You know, that's not the sex I wanna have, you know? I'm trying to have, you know, that, that porn sex, that mansion sex. I want to stick my dick through a banister and get it sucked. <laughs> yeah, that shit looks fun. That shit looks fun. Yeah. I'm trying to live out my fantasies. I'm trying to be loud with this shit, you know. I'm trying to, you know. I'm a doctor, Bo. I'm a doctor, Bo. <laughs> and I see the white people, they confused. They're like, well, I didn't know niggas liked water, but. <laughs> Since y'all allies, I'm gonna let y'all in on some. Uh, black people, we love boats, we love water. Um, the only issue is that um, we don't like getting on other people's boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was this one time. <laughs> yeah, because people is upset right now. The abortion shit people was mad about. But then HBO Max started canceling shows and niggas got really upset. <laughs> that shit. Was, and I wasn't affected by it because my favorite show had already got canceled. Uh, any fans of Empire in here? Y'all niggas lying. I saw the ratings, it wasn't doing that well. Um, I think it would have done a lot better if it went by its original name, which is a uh, nigga glee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know it's a controversial title, but just imagine you scrolling through the channels at home. And nigga Glee pops up. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be appalled for like the first five seconds. Then that little voice in the back of your head is going to be like, what are those niggas up to? But now I'm like forced to watch shit like Stranger Things. I hate that show. <laughs> that show is terrible. It made me think terrible things, you know? I'm just watching this little black kid and his white friends. <laughs> Do hella demonic shit. And I'm just like, would you please just like go join a gang or sell drugs? <laughs> You know, something safe. <laughs> something safe. They're like, nigga, you don't got no cousins? Where your cousins at? <laughs> I just don't like the white people he hanging out with. You know? Like, these the weakest white people you could possibly be with. One nigga got a bowl cut. The other got like a goonie faced. You know, I've been, I've been hanging out with white people because I've been trying to like get the hang of being famous. <laughs> it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. I was with this white woman uh, the other day, and my boy, he saw me. He just fucking went off. He was like, oh shit, Pap, you got a white bitch. <laughs> and I was like, hey, bro, you can't be, you can't be calling white bitches white bitches. <laughs> yeah. All loud whole foods like this, you know? <laughs> you gonna cost me my arugula, nigga. Like... <laughs> and it was funny because like, while we were saying that, she was just like, uh-uh, 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 I'm not white, I'm Nicaraguan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, mm-mm, you not nigga nothing. <laughs> it's crazy, because, like, everybody wants to say the N-word, and all the people I, like, really accept it for is Asian people. Yeah, yeah, Asian people can say nigga around me all they want to. I know, I know y'all like, oh, what you talking about, nigga, but <laughs> one of my favorite things is to go to sushi restaurants because they let you write your name on a little sign-up sheet. <laughs> and I'm an asshole, so, you know, I always write them niggas. And I just wait, <laughs> just wait. And they always pick up the clipboard and they go like, oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and I know one glorious day somebody's gonna pick up that clipboard and play. Like, <laughs> Dim niggas, party of two. I've been in New York for like two years and I knew I had missed LA because I started missing Scientologists. 
It was rough. It was rough. Like, I came back, and I was so happy because I was like, yo, New York is cool, but they don't have the things that L.A. has, you know, like the Lote lady. Yeah, corn on the stick. That shit is delicious. One of the best foods in the world. Um, my only issue with corn on the stick is that every lady that sells corn on the stick looks like that bitch that killed Selena. Yeah, you just be sitting there like, you dirty bitch. <laughs> another one, another one. I missed LA so much. Uh, the only thing I didn't miss was people telling me like inside facts about my heroes. Like the other day I found out that Morgan Freeman's name is it Morgan Freeman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Morgan Jones, that's what he was born as, but apparently he changed it when he got his freedom papers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were like, Morgan, you are a free man. He was like, yes, I am. And then I walked down that gravelly road all the way to Tinseltown. Uh, I'm in love with my lady. Yeah, yeah. I, I know the moment that I fell in love with her. Um, I sat her down. I was like, hey. You know, I really like you, so I got to tell you this. This is my biggest insecurity. I got head ripples. <laughs> she was like, what? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Jason Voorhees got the same back head. Yeah, and she she was like, it's okay, baby. I still love you. And I said, like, oh, thank God, because I've been scarred. Because, like, one time uh, I was hoofing with my boy, and we was running the courts. And I was like, hey, bro, I got to cut out. I got to get ready for this show. He was like, what? You got to get ready for your show? I was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, I feel you. You got to go iron your head. But you know, I found a lady to accept me, so now I got that off my bucket list. The only thing that's left on my bucket list is uh, I would love to meet uh, a Native American real estate agent. Well, I've been amazing. Yes, yes. And if you like me, if you love me, I'll be signing titties by the bar. I've been Pap Johnson. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>